be tricky. You know, it's not like um, applying silicone caulk. It's not like applying liquid nails. It's not like using a hot glue gun. In each of those other techniques, you can be working on something. You can put the gun down. You can spend a few minutes doing something else. You can pick up the gun again, and you can keep on going. But with uh, acrylic adhesive, uh, the technology is such that you have two, it's like an epoxy, you, you mix together two compounds which causes the bonding and the uh, hardening of the glue. And these are mixed in a little mixing tube that you attach to the gun. Well, the, the problem is that that glue will harden up inside that mixing tube very quickly. And as a result, you need to be very careful about you know, expressing this glue continuously and, and for the most efficient job, it's best to use the entire uh, tube of glue, which is 50 milliliters. That's just a small uh, tube of glue, which costs $18, by the way. Now, I am really impressed with the bonding strength of this glue. I mean, it, you know, they say that it's almost like a weld, and I, I believe them. But that's only if you apply it correctly. And I think this video is going to give you some insight about gluing versus riveting versus using bolts and um, tapping for uh, putting together projects. So I hope you enjoy it. This is a CAD representation of the basic roof rack and uh, I'm going to be talking about the challenges that I had in putting this whole thing together. The major components were the, uh, the rails around the rack that would hold the PV panel and ultimately the um, max air fan. And then structurally, the, the big challenge was uh, working with these brackets, these U brackets down here, which were really uh, intended to carry the load uh, for whatever is on the roof. This is a close-up of one of those U brackets. And this was the first challenge I had because I had to fashion this U bracket using these little angle uh, supports and these consist of two inch by two inch by quarter inch uh, L channel aluminum all right and uh, so I went to the steel company and I asked about these I needed 40 inches of these in order to cut them up to use for this piece and it's the only place in the whole design where I needed you know this particular type of uh, piece and uh, they said that I could only buy it in a 20-foot length and uh, it was going to cost me $80. So I got poking around. They had a scrap barrel there and I went and I found some steel angle iron that uh, I decided to use instead. It cost me about five bucks. And so that's what I used. In order to cut this steel, I had to borrow an angle grinder from my friend. And uh, I have a few of them cut there in the foreground, and I'm about to cut another piece. Now, this piece that I got from the steel company was about, you know, five feet long, so I had to cut it up into all of these small uh, pieces in order to use it. And I had to be real careful with this. The angle grinder would cut it best, you know, vertically. So I had, for each cut, I had to do two cuts. Turn it, uh, cut it once on the vertical, and then turn it around and cut it again uh, also vertically. You know, cutting a, uh, making a horizontal cut with this angle grinder was really pretty difficult. And the sparks flew all over the place. And, uh, but still, it worked all right. So I was fairly happy. After I got all the pieces uh, cut, I started assembling them. And I have some of them assembled over there on the right side. Uh, I had to clean all of the surfaces really well with isopropyl alcohol and then I buffed them using this, uh, uh, my drill and a brush wheel. And uh, the only thing that I would do differently is for these steel brackets, um, they were a little bit grimy. Okay, they were dirty. They'd been in the weather. And although I buffed them with the wire wheel, I think what I would do next time is really go at them with an angle grinder and take them down to the bright and shiny steel. Because as it was, I had a layer of, you know, weathered steel on the outside. It was clean, but it was still, 
not as good as if I'd had the very bare steel. And, I, and it resulted in the failure of one of my U-brackets. And when I repaired that U-bracket, I actually did take that surface all the way down to the bright and shiny steel, and I think it was much stronger. Now, after I got them all prepared, I started assembling them together using these fairly flimsy little Mickey Mouse clamps. But surprisingly, you know, the idea of the glue is to, uh, or the clamps, is to hold the pieces together so that the glue will uh, solidify inside there. And if you clamp them together too much, then you're going to squeeze all of the, uh, the glue out of there. So you don't want to do that. So you need just enough um, strength in your clamps to hold it together, but not to uh, squeeze the glue out. I want and to explain this to system pretty well. for bonding metals together. The, what the glue that I'm using is a 40619 acrylic adhesive from Lord, which consists of adhesive and an accelerator. And uh, the idea is to mix these so that the material will bond, will mix, and then bond uh, your two surfaces together. You use it with this um, uh, applicator gun and a, a plunger. And the plunger is configured to give you the four to one ratio that you need between the hardener and the, I call it resin for lack of a better word, but anyway, um, the, you, that's what gives you the four to one ratio. And then you put the plunger inside the gun. And then you take the tube and you slide it in the slot and then you can press the handle and out will come the um, material in the proper ratio. Now, what you attach to this is the mixing tube, so that you know as long as these are separated, this this system is stable. It can be it can be stored for you know up to a year or so. And then once you squeeze it through this mixing tube, it mixes these two things together, and what comes out is the material that will. Um, bond very quick it will set up pretty quickly and bond so um, if for example you're working on a project and then you stop in the middle of there you pause in the middle of the project what will likely happen is that the material is going to harden up inside the mixing tube so then you have to take this off throw this away you know they buy these you buy these like in packages of 50 or so you put on a new one and then you squeeze more material through it so when you stop in between you're going to waste the amount of glue that's inside the mixing tube and uh, if you if you stop for the day for example you can take this mixing tube off you can put the cap back on and now you can use you know the rest of your tube for your next project so that's the way that works I want to make a couple comments about gluing this U bracket together. Um, the first thing is that I think this is the ideal application for using this acrylic adhesive. It created a U bracket which was extremely strong. In fact, my my buddy Dave, who weighs over 200 pounds, uh, took one of these U brackets, put it on its side, and then stood on the U bracket, and it did not break. Okay, so you know they were strong, and. Uh, the way the rate that I put this on, I put in basically one pencil eraser size drop per square inch of surface area. Okay, so for example, I I had ten brackets and I had ten drops of glue on one side of the bracket, so I had two sides and that totaled about two hundred drops, and this took up the the whole fifty milliliter. It took up the whole tube of glue. And um, and that costs about eighteen dollars for that. All right, so you don't really want to waste this glue, but this was the perfect application for it. I'm going to talk about a not so perfect application for the glue next. So here I'm putting together the frame for the roof rack, and you'll notice that I've got all of the pieces clecoed together. And in fact, in a few of the places, I've got them double clecoed in order to eliminate some racking of the rack. All right. Uh, but the clecos mean that these are temporary connections, and my plan is to essentially go in there and glue each one of these joints and replace the, and then pull the clecos out later after the glue has set. 
Uh, one concern I had was that I would glue my Clicos into the aluminum. And that actually did happen in a couple of the Clicos. It took me a while to pull those out. But uh, in general, if you clean off the end of the Clico when you're done gluing, then it, uh, it won't stick. But as I'm showing here, I had this a removable frame too. This is a hinged part of the frame which is going to hold the PV panel and for that reason I didn't want any kind of rivets sticking into it and um, actually for this one I assembled the hinged part of this roof rack before I did the rest of it and I ended up bolting those. So I got screws which were exactly the right length. They were quarter inch long, which is spanned two one eighth inch um, widths of the aluminum material that I could use and I could screw. Uh, I, I tapped the one. I tapped the hole and then I screwed in an eight thirty two screw. You know for the removable portion of the roof rack, and that seemed to work pretty well. Now. One difficulty that I want to caution you about is that this glue sets up very, very quickly. All right, so uh, for this application, for example, I was able to glue all of these joints and I was able to do it quickly enough that uh, I didn't have any difficulties. However, I also went on to build a kitchen cabinet. And let me show you that in the picture here. You know, when you apply silicone caulk or you use a hot glue gun or something else that, uh, um, you know, doesn't care if you put it down and you pick it up, that's a lot different than applying acrylic adhesives using this mixing gun. Because if you're fiddly farting around and you, you glue one joint and then you put the gun down and then you take out some Clicos and then you uh, rearrange something else. Then you pick up the gun and you try to apply some more glue. What you find is that in that mixing tube, the glue has hardened at the tip and you can't push any glue out. The only way you can proceed at that point is to take that mixing tip off, which is full of glue, throw it away, put on another mixing tube and you know express the glue through there so you've wasted all of the glue in the mixing tube so for example this kitchen cabinet was a real challenge I first tried to glue it using the Clico approach and I was had all kinds of frustrations because I was messing around with the Clicos trying to put there were so many joints and so many Clicos that it became very complicated and time consuming to glue it and as a result my glue was hardening up in the tip all the time and <coughs> it was just a real pain in the butt eventually I ended up using rivets on this entire uh, kitchen rack assembly and Rivets are good, except that they don't prevent the unit from racking. In other words, if you glue it, then there is no movement of this at all. But if you rivet, then you know those members are free to pivot on that rivet. And so you have to take precautions in strategic places to prevent that from happening. And that means that sometimes you have to put in a double rivet, as I've shown here. And when you do that in a few places, that that seems to do the trick and this turned out to be a pretty solid piece but there's no way I would have been able to glue this it was just too complicated to glue I used rivets on the entire thing except that I used screws in a few places where I didn't want my rivet heads sticking out you know for example I have a I may put it in a drawer and I don't want you know the rivets sticking out because they would interfere with the movement of the drawer on the uh, on the channels so uh, in that case, I used the uh, the drill and tap approach using those short screws that I screw right into the uh, aluminum itself after I've tapped it, and I don't have any screw coming out, but it fastens the two pieces together. Here's an application where combination of using Clicos and gluing makes a lot of sense, and. The idea here is to use the Clicos to square everything up. And notice I use the double Clico in the lower right. 
Um, and then after that, you can place your bars on top there and you get your clamps all ready. You get everything ready so that you can minimize the amount of fussing around while you're gluing. And if you spend too much time fussing around, then your glue hardens if you, and if you, uh, then you get in all kinds of trouble. Here, here's a little video that shows you sort of the pace at which you have to work. Now, I was, as I was doing this, I was a little bit nervous about the length of time I was spending between actually placing the uh, bars on there and lining them up, getting them all straight, getting the clamps applied. Notice that I've put the gun down and I'm nervous about the length of time that I've got that gun down. But I just kept on going and I noticed that the next time I picked it up and I squirted a little bit of glue, it came out easily. So that length of time was was not too bad all right so I'm you know at this pace I'm able to keep that glue flowing at a, you know an acceptable pace so that it doesn't harden up inside the tip so that's about uh, and that's probably about the limit at which you can you know set that gun down you know if you if you work any slower than that you're gonna notice that it starts hardening up and if you really spend a long time then you get in trouble really fast and you and then you can't push any glue through the thing. So notice that I did the bed frame in two sections and that's because each of these uh, met this mesh of horizontal bars sits on top of a, a uh, you know a frame that I can lift up in two sections and uh, but this, this one around the wheel well was more complicated than the other one and I just felt more comfortable uh, putting everything in place, you know, on top of the frame where it's eventually going to sit uh, because it gets really confusing if you, you know, what I did not want to do was to glue all of these bars and then fi find out later on that I'd, you know, put them in the wrong place. So this one I glued in place on the bed uh, so that I wouldn't make a uh, mistake. I learned a lot about gluing and it is fantastic in the right application but in the wrong application you can e end up spending a lot of money and wasting a lot of glue.